It's okay. No, the camera's not pointed at you. Thirty 
people with text in your boxes. If you've got stuff written down, it's going to be really easy to get your hand up when that buzzer makes a noise in about three seconds. So be ready. That's fun. It's like a heartbeat. Sorry. Just getting to know your timer, too, which is a lot of fun there. All right. What aspect of the article jumped out to you most? I'm interested in your honesty, because honestly, I read this like you guys did for homework. I don't know where you are with this, so I would love to hear that. So please, if you could get your hands up, I'd love to call on a couple of people. Got one brave soul right now. Oh, we got two. <coughs> See, oh, it's spreading like a disease over here a little bit. See, what's going on up here? Quarantine, you're safe. Uh -huh. All right, we're going to start here, and please again give me your name when we start. We'll go one, two, and then five, three. Excellent. Um, my name is Donnie, and what jumped out to me was um, that there was a loss of um, skills in the game of new skills. And I'm, I'm going to do a thing, it sounds like I'm not paying attention to you, but I'm not going to like say like, good job or not, I'm just going to listen so we can keep listening to each other because I don't want to talk too much over this. So, let's go to our second person. Oh, we jumped out Sorry, what's your name, sir? Axel. Axel, nice to meet you. Um, that we use technology to express our, like, the way that we think or feel about awesome. something. Excellent. My name is Giovanni, and the thing that stood out to me was more the change to be more isolated. For example, the text says, we got in used to the idea of being in a tribe, in a tribe of one, loyal to our own, and that's more for the fact on how technology plays a role in our lives. Wonderful. I'd love to hear from someone in this corner table over here. What do you want to be all right doing? Yeah. Awesome. That jumped out to me, too. Do, is that something that any of you would like actively say? Because y'all are in that target. Have you ever been like, I wish I could have a conversation? No, not really. No, okay, so I was wondering. This is good. <laughs> right? Because this article is definitely making some pretty clear claims. It's got, it's got a pretty spicy take, if you will. But I'm not sure if I'm 100% behind it all the time. And as readers, it's not our job to just accept what's going on at face value. We've got to be able to break it down and kind of figure out what's going on. So that's what we're actually doing today. You'll notice that this classwork goes in order. I like numbers. It's easy. You're like, you start with one, and then you go to two, and then you go to three, and then you go to pi, and then you go to four. That was a math joke. I'm sorry. So what are we doing today is actually up at the top right here. We're doing two things with this article. Because there's a lot of good stuff about technology in it that we want to unpack, certainly. But as readers, as scholars, as intelligent people like all of us are, we also want to do two things with this article, which, I, by the way, I call TFFC. Because I don't like saying the full thing, and then it sounds like some sort of an like alien KFC, which makes me happy deep on the inside. So the two things we're doing here. One, I can identify the key points of the argument, which we started to touch on. These seem to jump out to you, right? We know we're dealing with technology. We know we're dealing with communication and how that's changing. But like, what's the actual key point, and how can we find it? And the second thing we're going to be able to do by the end of the day is figure out how does the writer craft this argument? which is right, even the bigger picture. Why did they write it the way they wrote it? And what choices did they make? And how did that affect our understanding of it? So those are two pretty big questions. But I'm not just going to like say, do it. I'm going to help give you a strategy. And so your strategy is this. It's simple, and it's right by the really nice picture of uh, a sundae. I'll explain why. I like to do metaphors. Food is delicious. Um, but I have a strategy for you. We're going to need to break this down. Regardless of whether you annotated it really beautifully and it's fully annotated, regardless if your sheet is more blank than not, we can't just take this whole article, this whole Sunday, and shove it in our mouth in one go. What you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up making a mess. You'll probably end up like choking on it a little bit. It's really hard. There's only so much Sunday you can fit in one mouth at a time. And let me tell you, if you've got a beard, it gets real bad real quick. So, we understand. Uh, Giovanni and I know. So, so we got to break it down. And so, this isn't going to be a word that's new to you guys, but this might be a tool we haven't thought of using. And maybe you have, I don't know. But we're going to use, and there's a blank right here for number two strategy. Our strategy is we're going to use paragraphs as a tool of focus. Now we all know paragraphs. I write really big to make up for the fact that my handwriting is really bad. Paragraph, right? I'm going to put S. Paragraphs, we know them. 
Some people know them by like their cute animal cousin, the paragraph. Same symbol, same name. What's a paragraph? I have a really bad memory and I forget things all the time. What is a paragraph? What do you know that as? Yes? It is a collection of sentences. It is. I'll take that. What's your name, Ken? Edwin. Edwin? Edwin. Edwin. Thank you, Edwin. Edwin. Collection of sentences. I buy that. I have a definition for you at the bottom here as a footnote. <clears throat> a self-contained unit of discourse. But you could also go simple and say it's a clump of stuff. It's a clump of an idea. You write in paragraphs sometimes? All the time. And we know putting something in a paragraph is an important maneuver, right? The stuff around it ends up functioning as like the family of the language. It's all together, it's one idea, and then we move on to the next thing. And we do this in all of our forms. In poetry, it's the stanza. In music, it's the verse, right? It's the chunk of stuff that makes one meaning. So we can't shove this whole Sunday in our mouths, this whole article, but we can take it on a bite at a time. And that's what the paragraph's going to do for us. So what I want to do is I want to refocus here on the article by thinking about what the author is doing in each paragraph. Because the author has to be doing something. You guys know this. You've never just like fallen asleep and woken up and written an essay. That's not how it works. You have to actually put words together. You have to think. It takes a lot of energy, sometimes too much energy. But it's a thing you do. It takes a, you make a lot of choices. And the author made a lot of choices to put these paragraphs together. So, here is what we're going to think about. What's going on in each paragraph and how can we tell? All right. Now, the other real reason that it's really handy to use paragraphs is the other set of blanks right here, is that paragraphs are fun to cite. Um, I think it was Giovanni read us a quote, right? Was that you, sir? Yeah. Yeah, he gave us a quote. And quotes are fantastic. I love quotes. But they take a while, right, to read out. Versus, I can say, in paragraph four, the author's claim was blank. Or, in paragraph seven through nine, the author got obsessed with food metaphors. Or, paragraph 12 was in Spanish. It wasn't, but it could have been. It's easy to talk about. I have to quote it. I can just say, this is where I looked and this is what I found. And so that's really helpful for us as readers. So paragraphs are fun. I love paragraphs. At the end of this, we're all going to get matching paragraph tattoos. <laughs> No, we're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to walk you through my process, because as you might guess, I've been doing this for a while. I'm tall. I'm an expert. I've been teaching for a while. I know English. But you guys can do this very easily, too, because you're really, really smart and good at this, too. And the process, as soon as you get a hang of it, is not that bad. It just clicks in your head, just as fast as that cell phone notification tone. So, everyone open, go to your article right now. I will do the same. See, it wasn't mine. I had updated I underlined things. I made notes in the margins. And all we're going to figure out is for every single paragraph, and that's every one, our question is this, right? What is the author doing? What are they doing? What are they doing with the thing? That's it. And so I'll walk you through what I think of, and we'll see the couple of common things an author does, and then we're going to try to go break it down individually with our groups and figure out what is that. Okay? So, I'm just going to read this first paragraph with you but then you got to hear. We live in a technological universe in which we are always communicating, and yet we have sacrificed conversation for mere connection. Okay. What is the author doing right there? Awesome. Yes. Yeah, raise your hand. Raise your hand. What's the author doing? Yeah. Statement. Give it a statement. And they're giving it a type of statement. Now I'm going to label the type of statement. The type of statement the author is making right there is a really common one. It is called a claim. Do you guys know claims? Yeah. Maybe you call them assertions. Sometimes you call them thesis statements. Other times you just call them claims. We use claims all the time. All of you are cool. That's a claim. Something that is supportable by evidence and argumentative. Great. So we have a claim to start. And I wrote claim in my corner, right there. 
Now, that makes sense. What is the claim in this paragraph? What is the point they're trying to make? Because not every word is as important as anything else. So if we're going to look at like a phrase or maybe even a sentence that's the most important, what is the thing that, what is the claim the author is making here, Axel? Well, she uses the word sacrifice conversations and to interpret that we have lost communication with each other. Yeah. I would, if I were doing that, I would exactly agree with that too. I think the claim here is we have sacrificed conversation for mere connection. Seems to be the point. Okay. That's the first paragraph. Let's see if the second paragraph is exactly the same, right? Or is the author doing something else? At home, families sit together, texting and reading email. At work, executives text during board meetings. We text and shop and go on Facebook during classes, not here of course, and when we're on dates. My students tell me about an important new skill. It involves maintaining eye contact with someone while you text someone else. It's hard, but it can be done. I like the ooh there. Someone's like, I got a yeah, skill to work on this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> a lot of information here. Is the author making a claim again? No. No, and I love that you guys shouted out no there. Exactly. What is the author doing? They're doing something else. Uh, yeah. My name is Eddie. He's giving me an example. Yes, an example. So I've been backing it up. You can call it support. I don't think we want to get as precise as possible, so I should talk about the type of support it is. If I'm supporting a claim with a small story from the real world, do you have a really good word for that? Sarcastic. Say what? Sarcastic. Oh, what? Sarcastic. Not necessarily. I'm feeling here anecdote. Have you heard anecdote? Yeah. Yeah. It's an anecdote. It's a short story that illustrates a point in support. So we start the claim. So we start the claim. We move on to an anecdote. And now, if you speed through things real quickly on the rest of this first page, you start to see a pattern here. Okay? And I'm just going to start with the first page, because then you guys are going to be so sufficiently pro that you can handle it from this point forward. So over the past 15 years, I've studied technologies of mobile connection and talked to hundreds of people of all ages and circumstances about their plugged-in lives. I've learned that the little devices most of us carry around are so powerful that they change not only what we do, but also who we are. What does that sound like to us? The world. It does sound like the world. I like that. You're, you're vibing with this argument a little bit right now. Another claim. Another claim. I buy that. I'm right. Claim in over here. Okay. Let's, go, let's see what's happening next. Maybe we'll see, is it going to go claim anecdote, claim anecdote? Let's see paragraph four. We've become accustomed to a new way of being alone together. Technology enabled, we are able to be with one another and also elsewhere connected to wherever we want to be. We want to customize our lives. We want to move in and out of where we are because the thing we value most is control over where we focus our attention. We've gotten used to the idea of being a tribe in one, loyal to our own party. What are you seeing here? I know Giovanni said, I want to get some more people maybe over here. Oh, go back to, wait, Donnie, Danny? Donnie. Donnie. Got to trust myself. My bad, Donnie. Yeah. It sounds like another claim because he's um, claiming that all people don't like the control that's been given. It is. In fact, if you know, we've done claim, anecdote, claim, claim. And you guys get this. Without spoiling anything, almost all of these paragraphs fall under claim or anecdote. And you are not expert enough to know what it is. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to set a timer for four and a half minutes. And what I want you all to do right now is I want you to go through the rest of this article quickly and identify each paragraph. Is it a claim? Is it an anecdote? And then if it is a claim, maybe it might be a good idea to underline what the most important claim actually is, because I bet you that's going to get us to our key points, and I bet you the order of this is going to lead us to our final thoughts about the whole article as a whole. Sound good? I'll be floating around. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. We're now going to take this on four and a half minutes. Please talk this over with your group. This is not just individual. Work through this. Be efficient. Do your best. Go! <laughs> Awesome. You're welcome. To a dragon? What? All right, T, let's get ourselves started over here.
It's on here. It's on here. So, what you do is you want to just go through each paragraph and decide, is it? Exactly. And so you guys can even just like, hey, 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 real quick. Just talk through it. You can rush through this. First one, C. Second one, C. C. That is an awesome note, actually. How are we doing? How are we doing? Okay. Happy to hear. All right. And once you decide, make sure you write whether it's a player anecdote in the margin, you can just see right. There's new purposes. It's power to it. You're gonna, the pattern's going to help you out. This is a <laughs> yeah, after you do a while, it starts sounding kind of a little bit like a type of DNA or Conversations where you guys are starting to notice some patterns relating to how many claims there are, how many anecdotes they are, the order they're in. 
And all of these choices made by the author definitely help get us to our key points and definitely help explain how the author is trying to convince us of what they're trying to convince us of. So my question for you right now, I'm going to give you and your groups just like 40 seconds to talk it over, and we'll have about two minutes as a whole class to chat, and then we'll probably be out of time, is this. What patterns did you notice? So like, what's going on here? With claims and anecdotes in the paragraphs, what is this author doing? And how is it getting some kind of information into your head? It's a lot of question to answer, so I'll repeat it one more time. It's also written on the back side of your classwork. Just what are the patterns doing? What do you notice? What is continually going on? Take 45 seconds to preview with your group, and then we'll chat as a class. I love what you were saying there, and I think both the things you said could be true. Like if you look at page one, maybe that's very easy. Each two is but the pile of the What are you thinking over here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to write it Okay, awesome. Everyone, if you have your attention up here, I'll go back. Awesome. With our last two minutes together, we just going to chat. I'm hearing some good things. I want you guys to be responding and listening to each other, so I'm not going to do the thing. I'm just going to call on a couple of you to speak, be listening to each other. I'm not going to say, like, yay or nay, because I'm going to try to get my opinions out of it, because you guys are the scholars that matter here. So, as you also, as people say smart things, feel free to jot them down here in your notes. You can keep them forever with you. All right. What patterns did you notice? I'm going to start over here, and then we'll bounce over here. Yeah? So I kind of noticed that like it jumps from claim, then anecdote, and then at times you see like claim, claim, back to back. But it's usually claim and then anecdote, because that anecdote is supporting the claim that he previously made, so that he can move on to his next claim and make a different point. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very, very true on that first page especially. On the second page, did anyone notice anything goofy with the ratio of claims to anecdotes? It was off by a lot. It was off by a lot. In which direction? Where's the more of? Claims. So my question for you, and this is the last thing I get to say, and then I have to roll out of here, is... Why do you think the author had a, more claims than anecdotes on paragraph two? Why? Paragraph two or page Sorry, page two, my bad. Thank you. And then paragraph one on page two. And take a second to think about it if you need to, because I'd love to see more hands. I love the, all of you have been communicating, have been rocking it, but I know I haven't heard from some of you. I know you're going to rock it too. Why have the ratio be that way? This is such a purpose question. This is like what we're getting into. Yeah, join. Alright, well, I mean, if you kind of look at the first page, it gives you prompting questions, so you already have like an idea of what the author is going to say, so I feel like he's giving more claims than anecdotes for the fact that. He's proven to us that he's a reliable, like, he's reliable because of the anecdotes he's supporting his claims with. So he thinks he can just keep giving more claims because he's reliable. So we're at least going to believe him or at least go and do more research about the claims he's been giving us. I'm going to mention that the author's name is Sherry, but I do... Oh, my bad. No, I... Sure. Right, gotta do it. But also, this did was published in the New York Times so the days have a book, so I buy the rest of your claim. Oh, if only one more time. I think I'm gonna have to call it right there. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Um, all right, my friends, what I want you to do is
just keep your notes out. You have the feedback survey. As a reminder, you do not need to write your name. You do have to write a comment. You have one minute. Do not take that long. Somebody should have extras.